Okay guys, in this video I'm going to be answering a lot of your questions about how I tone my hair. So I'm also going to be going through the process. I'm going to use Color Charm T18 by Wella and a 20 volume developer. You can also use a 10 volume developer and the 10 is just going to give you a harsher or darker um, ash and the 20 volume is going to give you more of a blonde look. So I'm going to pour that into the bowl, the whole thing, and then I'm going to use two parts of the developer and a simple way to do that is to just fill up your container with the developer and pour that into the bowl twice. I did get a lot of questions about my toning and bleaching process in my last video so I wanted to answer some of those. Um, this one is asking about the products I recommend. Are they going to be enough for her dark hair? So I was using 20 volume developer to lighten my hair. I like to go low and slow, so this means using a low amount of developer, a low volume, and leaving it on for a longer period of time. If you do have very dark hair, you might need to use a 30 volume developer or start with a 20 and then move to a 30, depending on how long your hair takes you to do but I would never use a 40 volume developer on anyone's hair. So here I'm applying the mixed solution of developer and toner, and I'm first putting it on all of the areas that are the most yellow, which are my roots because that is the freshly uh, bleached area. So I'm gonna apply that all over my roots first. The next question is about the level of my hair, so how light my hair is naturally. And my hair is a level seven, which is a dirty blonde. Um, there's not much warmth to it. It's um, just very mousy, I guess. And um, level sevens are pretty easy to lighten without pulling any red or orange. Usually a level five and below will give you a lot of those reds and oranges. So if you find that when you are lightening your hair and it's only turning orange or red, it either means that you need to increase your volume of developer or leave on the developer longer or do a double process. So do another um, lightening process to your hair with the 20 or 30 developer. So I don't want you guys to get confused with what I'm doing right now. Right now I am toning my hair with a 20 volume developer and the Wella T18. Um, never go higher than 20 on your developer and you are allowed to use 10 or 20. 10 gives you a more potent um, solution. So if you're worried about your hair turning purple, um, stick with the 20. Or if you really don't want to have any ounce of yellow in your hair, then use a 10. Watching this video and seeing just how yellow my roots are is really going to show you the power of this toner because normally my hair isn't usually this yellow. I think I was like really excited to just do this toner, but um, it really is powerful. It's really going to get rid of all that yellow. Once you complete one side of your head in the front area, then move to the other side. I like to do this in the front first because it's the area that I honestly care more about. If you find that the back of your head looks really yellow or orange or um, isn't looking as good as the front, start in the worst looking area because this is kind of like your correction that you're doing. You're correcting that color, you're getting rid of that yellow, the purple is going to cancel out all that yellow. After I've applied it, I like to brush it out to just create a seamless blend and then I'm gonna work on the back area. This is seriously a game changer knowing how to set up your mirrors. So you're going to want to set up a big mirror behind you and have your mirror in front of you. You need to play with the angles. So I have a vanity that I'm moving around to get the perfect angle so that I can see the back of my head. Um, you can have someone help you do your hair, but if you don't have anyone in the house that knows what they're doing. It's best to try and uh, figure this out yourself because once you know how, it's going to save you so much money, so much time, and you're going to be able to have a really 
um, cohesive blend. I'm doing the same thing here that I did at the front of my head. So I'm pulling small sections, clean sections, because you wanna make sure that you're just getting the really um, yellow areas first. And so you're gonna make your way through your head. Uh, it can seem intimidating to try and set up these mirrors, but it's really simple once you get the hang of it. Like you have to play with it each time. There's no set uh, formula, so it really helps to have a, a desk or a table in front of you that has a mirror on it that you can turn or if you can set up the mirror behind you to be able to turn. I usually leave the mirror behind me as um, it stays in one place and then I use my vanity and turn it to the right and do one side of my head and then I have to turn it to the left to do the other side of my head. This next question is a very relatable valid question because a lot of people who are going this blonde have some sort of highlights in their hair and that's actually how I started out. I went to a salon and had highlights done and I just wasn't happy with what they did. It wasn't it wasn't light enough and so I just went for it and did my own hair and how I did it was I first went on all the dark areas of my hair with the bleach and then I did the whole head with bleach. And so this is going to really depend on what kind of hair you're starting out with, but if you have just regular highlighted hair that um, isn't orange or red and you just want that brightness, it's best to start out in your mid shaft area and do the mid shaft and then do your roots and then do the ends. And this can seem confusing, but you're basically, your head gives off heat. So your head will develop the lightener faster than anywhere else on your head. And you also wanna protect your ends. So starting in the mid shaft gives you that time to get the majority of your head done and then do your roots and then do your ends and it should be a good amount of uh, blending done with that. It depends if you have some box color on your hair. This is why stylists charge so much because people have such different hair history and they need to know how to address each situation. And um, you know your hair history. So anywhere where you have box dye, anywhere that is dark, start with those areas, do your roots, and then do your ends. And Try not to overlap old bleach, but it depends how light that old bleach is. I hope that makes sense, but I basically started out with highlighted hair. I did my mid shaft. I got some bleach on my old highlights. It's fine. My hair wasn't damaged from it because I wasn't using a lot of heat. Now I'm going to brush out all of the toned areas, and this is basically like a root blend. I also like to use a comb after that to just get the detail of those little hairs and, and so it really helps make it blend better when you use a comb. I use the wet brush to do the majority of the hair though. I let my hair sit for a little while and then I use the rest of the toner to do the mid shaft and ends of my hair. Um, this works really well when your hair is wet and you can actually get away with using less bottles of toner but since my hair is dry here i am going to actually need another bottle of toner which is totally normal my hair is long um, you have to be a little bit more particular about where you're putting the toner when your hair is dry because it's going to absorb that color and be more harsh um, if your hair is wet it can blend a lot better. Like if you think of conditioner, um, putting conditioner on dry hair, you're gonna have a little blob here and a blob there. Um, whereas if you put conditioner on wet hair, you can really work it into the hair. I did this with dry hair because I assume that some people may be coming from the salon and unhappy with the tone of their hair, or maybe their hair has gone yellow over time. And so I'm showing it from a dry state but a really easy way to do this is right after you do your roots with the bleach, you can go to my, um, my hair lightening and toning video. I'll link it below. That'll show you how to first lighten your hair and then you do this process on wet hair. 
As you can see, I'm brushing my hair a lot. I wanna make sure that everything's blended and I'm not leaving areas like that that are very yellow. I wanna make sure it gets everywhere and I'm really blending it in because it's really going to show if you leave patches and blobs on your hair. <laughs> So that's as far as one bottle got me. So I'm gonna use my second bottle and pouring one part with two parts developer. One of the most asked questions is how long to leave the toner on and that's all going to depend on the current state of your hair. You wanna keep checking your hair to see if it's the right color that you want. Some people want a very ashy color. Some people want a sort of yellow color. And some people are starting off with some pretty orange hair, so it's all going to depend on what you're starting off with. A lot of people have been worried about blotchiness, and it can look a little bit blotchy when you do it the first time, but after a shampoo or two, your hair is going to look completely even. This was not after more shampoos. This was uh, from my hair wet to dry. And as you can see, it's a very ashy blonde. It reflects the light in a very white ashy way. The great thing about toner is that it's not permanent so it's not going to stay that color forever and you can play with the tone by using purple shampoos to maintain it or using regular shampoos will turn it more yellow but I love this ashy color. If you have any more questions leave them down below I'd love to answer them and thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe for more videos. Hi.